with your negativity. Anxiety. How many times we've been over this? I had no time for you today. Your positivity has blinded me from the truth. That's why I'm here to cleanse it. What? What is it you don't understand? Your power doesn't work here. Oh, have you forgot the source of my power? Invisible Season 1 is an animated superhero series on Amazon Prime based off the graphic novel written by Robert Kirkman, who also wrote the Walking Dead graphic novel. And for those of you who haven't seen the series, I'm going to make this spoiler free. For those of you who still can still have time to check it out, this is an experience. I'm not going to go in too much detail in it without going, because if I do, it will go into spoiler territory. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be vague as much as I can, but I'm still going to break this thing down. So let's get into it. So Invisible basically takes place in this world where superheroes, supervillains, super teams, supervillain teams exist. This series follows one hero being played by uh, Stephen Young, and his name is Mark Grayson. He is 17 years old, and his powers hasn't fully developed, but they, they come in episode one. And his father is Omni-Man. He's pretty much like the strongest superhero on that world. He's pretty much like that version. He's like pretty much like that world Superman. Because he has super strength, durability, heat vision. He has a full package. As I was watching this show, I started off with the first episode, of course. But, you know, I gotta be honest. The first episode was a huge cliche. It had conventional tropes. It, you know, it it had some good jokes and stuff like that. It was it was very conventional. Had a lot of superhero cliche tropes, and it even have a group that looked like the Justice League. And I know what you're saying. Oh my God! Oh my God! Look, look, look at this. Why are you having us watching another Justice League Unlimited, man? You, you just said it got characters that look like the Justice League, so basically it's like another repo of a superhero show. Come on, man. Why? But, but hold your horses. Hold your horses. Okay. Let me go in further about what I'm trying to say. So as I was watching the first episode, so yes, it had a lot of cliche, had a little tropes. Those are my look, those are my little complaints with the first episode. But then after the first episode, I would say like the end credits, it railed me in. It railed me in. And I, I can't really go into spoilers, but it 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 destroyed me and it basically flipped flip flop me upside down and showed me the 50 states while penetrating my butt cheeks. I don't know how that's possible, but yeah, it, it penetrated my butt cheeks and I was instantly captivated into the show. After that first episode, I would say that the first episode, I would say like the last 10 minutes of the episode, like the last, yeah, the last 10, the last, strictly, yeah, yeah ex literally the last 10 minutes, no. The last five minutes of the episode, the last five minutes of the episode, literally, or maybe like six minutes, it did a great job of revolutionizing the plot and becoming its own thing. 
It's really pretty much what I gotta say. Now I'll get a little bit more details on the plot just to hear a bit there, but I wanna go back to Mark Grayson. This is Mark Grayson, he's 17 years old, his powers just came in, and you follow him in this journey while he's developing his powers, he meets other heroes, and he gains relationships throughout the way. There are moments in this season where he connects with his father, Omni-Man, not gonna go in full details, but there's there's this mystery revolving around Omni-Man that is, that is that basically will bring you in and basically get you hooked on the show and and also i did like the dynamic between father and son and like in the first three episodes but it, it is going to change i ain't gonna say it's gonna change for the good or gonna change for the worse you're just gonna have to watch out and find out now jk simmons was a did a fantastic job voicing omni man and stephen yen he's the voice of mark grayson he is the, basically the main character it's not technically omni man the main character but mark grayson it's, i like the character it's good character development scattered throughout there are plot points of story beats that elevates the plot each in each episode there there's some subplots in this show that intrigues you, makes you think that, okay, could that make an impact in later episodes or maybe next season or something like that? But there are some very cool cultural references. Now, I get this, I get a small complaint, you know, about some super about some superhero shows about saying that uh there's too many superhero shows out there we got jupiter's legacy which i might review um we got uh the boys we got you know we got this show the old guard uh, uh code eight you know a lot of movies a lot of shows have superhero concepts basically what started it all was endgame um some critics say it takes away from film and stuff like that but you know, it, you know, I like superheroes, but for this right here, I will, I will say it's, it's a little different from your traditional superhero movie or superhero show. It's kind of like the boys in a way, but, but, um, but I feel like the, the boys focus more on the socialism and the political aspects, and while this one focused on Mark Grayson's interpersonal relationships with his father and other people, and it elevates those story arcs within in each episode. So yeah, it focuses on Mark Grayson. He's trying to get the girl. He's trying to balance superhero and dating life, and and I know the complaint's gonna come. Okay, you made it sound like he's Spider-Man, you know, because Spider-Man's trying to balance his life, trying to get the girl, and, and stuff like that. Ah, uh, let me explain first, let me explain. When, like I said before, it does sound like it's something you have seen before, but when you watch this show, it is nothing you have seen before, trust me. Like, uh, they did a fantastic job of just balancing out the emotion you know since it's the animation that you know they they i was just making sure they they the voice actors are able to pinpoint the right time to showcase emotion that can that can go along with the character they can blend in you know and i was just like oh it had a it had a great deal of emotion and also from a writing standpoint they balanced out did a good job of balancing out mark grayson's lifestyle between a super, being a superhero and trying to work on his interpersonal relationships you actually believe it you buy it and it's almost relatable you can um, you can feel his feelings. You can feel that teenage angst. You, when you watch this show and you experience, watch him experience, you know, the, that teenage angst, you're like, hm, yep, I experienced that same thing that you've gone through, bro. Let's get straight to the action. Yes, this, this show has some spectacular action. Like, over, not, like, it's violent, hard to the core, bone, like, bloody, rips and taking out limbs. This, this is bloodhound. Like, it's... Hunger for blood, blood splatter, you know, this is unexpected hardcore. And, it, and every single fight is brutal. And if every single fight in each episode gets gets even more brutal. And I'm just like, okay, this is hardcore. You're going too hard. You can feel every punch. You can hear every blood splatter. You can feel every organ being squished to mush. This is some hardcore stuff you haven't seen before in this TVMA. Children, I won't recommend children watching this. And I just have to praise the sound design and the sound mixing, you know, of the blood splatter because every single punch I felt, every single butt blood splatter, I felt like my blood was splattering. I want to take a break from the action part and I want to go back to the emotion layer of it. Like, I like how they paid attention to detail of trying to switch it up. Like I said before, they revolutionized the plot by having them, by adding in a mystery investigative aspect to the show. Like there's this giant, like I said before, there's this giant mystery revolving around Omni-Man. There's this giant mystery revolving around 
this this thing, this thing, this this huge thing. Like, I mean, you the audience, you know, when after watching the first episode, but it it is just the characters don't know, and you get that little inks like ah uh, that and that anxiety, that anticipation, that that thrill that you just want to want you just want to you just want to have more you just want to know what how the character's going to react as they found out and that right there were the stepping stones of making this show different from your traditional superhero show and it definitely breaks the superhero trope even more because our hero like a like in like i said before there's this is violent but our hero or is not like invincible he's not invincible he's not super powerful he ain't OP. He's actually LP, low powered. I mean, this, this, I can't really go in full details, but this kid right here, he goes through it. The character didn't suffer anything. He just, he just went through some hardships in life, you know, for very hardships and punches. After the next episode, one thing I do really do like about it, that each episode is a continuation of the last episode. Like, if you watch, like, Justice League Unlimited, you watch an episode that characters are happy or characters are going through a mission the next episode they're going through a different mission it is not like that in this series like if if our main hair character is suffers like a major event the next episode the character is still experiencing that major event and he's still affected by it and and I'm just like whoa they did a really good job did a good job of just making this show feel just making show cohesive from episode to episode so our hero suffers a major major beating but it's yeah, it's just super violent, over the top violent, but it's not gratuitous. Like the violence has a purpose. Like it, the fights are realistic. Like if you are a superhero, you actually could lose limbs. And then also you deal with the real life consequences of being a superhero. So if you save a cat from a tree, you try to save a cat from a tree, but you end up squishing the killing the cat because you didn't know your know your own strength. You couldn't control your strength the right way to properly hold the cat or you or a person is falling without a parachute, you you uh, you jump in the air, but you don't know you don't know how to fly, so you jump in the air and you crash land on the ground, you know, from the momentum, and then the guy in your arms die. So yeah, those are real life consequences of being a hero that they did a good job of show of, of showcasing in this show. And that right there are the stepping stones to make this show revolutionize itself. Invincible season one is a show that you can you can enjoy if you're a fan of superheroes. Definitely is a show for you. It is over the top violence, so if you're not a fan of over the top violence, like super bloody sequences where limbs get ripped off and bodies get torn to shreds, this is not for you. But if you like, if you like the boys and if you like that kind of stuff, this is definitely a show for you. You just gotta watch the first episode, and that will get you hooked. So if, you, if so, basically, if you are a fan of the first episode, then you're the fan of the show. If you're not the fan of the first episode, then you probably won't be the fan of the show. So I'm going to have to give Invincible Season 1 an A. So guys, that's my review of Invincible Season 1. What are your thoughts of, of Invincible Season 1? Have you seen it? Comment below and let's talk about it. Let's go in depth. And I'll see you guys in my next review. And if you like everything you see and you agree, subscribe to my channel and join me and the Batman family. I'll have more Batman-tastic reviews in the way. You have been warned. Till then, ciao. We're saving the world!